What is up, everybody? Chad here, back in the house. I'm here with Mintalox today. Another fellow OG, a gentleman who's huge on TikTok, who knows what he's doing in the space. Uh, we connected a lot on Twitter, and you know, I think he's just a really, really smart guy, super wise. And I wanted to kind of, you know, put him here today so we could pick his brain um, and just kind of get into it. So, what's up, brother? How are you? Just chilling, man. Just chilling. Happy, happy to be here on the channel with you. Yeah, man. Happy to have you here. Like I said, I've been following your TikTok a lot. And I was like, I really like the kind of a cool creative content that you put together. And I was like, man, it'd just be neat to kind of have a conversation to, you know, see how our worlds kind of collide in terms of like engagement and the different users that you have on TikTok compared to YouTube. So I think it'll be, uh, you know, a really cool conversation today, dude. Yeah, yeah, it will. So listen, man, Wire is back. How do you feel about that? <laughs> dude like that was like everyone in the community is saying like i really felt like vb handled it very well they you know sent out emails and then they they tweeted about it like as soon as it came out and then everyone else kind of like was like oh we panicked this that and the other but uh, uh randy chavez pretty much said like he thinks that they have like you know more more in their back pocket as far as like when they want to be able to you know, roll that out. So I don't think cash out's going to be gone for like the next two years. Right. Right. And it's funny too, because there was a bit of a pump while the cash out was taken away. <laughs> and I was like, is this artificial because <laughs> it's not necessarily real? Or I'm like, you know, maybe crypto was also, I heard people were saying crypto was also pumping a little bit, but I was like, yeah, Bitcoin went to like 18 point something like 18 K. Right. And it's good because it kind of already shows you what stuff pumped, right? Like we saw mm -hmm. a lot of the grails pump right away. Yeah. Like you saw like partners and, you know, I think it was like MC1SR went to like 12.1 or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like people that are like kind of in this, the low point right now, like I don't, I don't know if we're going to see too much lower uh, yeah, than I these current know. prices. And then the people that were stacking Spidey Commons, like FA Spidey Commons, yeah some of those got burned so they was able to flip those for profit and then probably roll them into like mc1 todds and things like that to make those pumps so it was crazy oh, it's crazy so it's like a crazy. chain reaction of everything <laughs> dude i didn't even know that that happened yeah. i thought it was a fake tweet but maybe bro so nah, so what does that mean <laughs> like did did it was it because of the botters and shit vv just like took uh, those they they could have been because now they're talking about the the merge account things and like uh like getting ready to like to like roll that out and they were saying if you had omi on the um on there then you need to move that omi because it won't transfer um right. your mc your mcp points won't won't transfer just the collectibles and things like that um but i think the similar thing happened with the with the captain america common where they just they just burned it right so, and then it, and then that one flew up so spidey commons are like I checked last night because I was in the market buying uh, some X Men comics and things like that. It was one sixty five, I believe. It, it may not have been the high this week, but when I when I last seen it, it was one sixty five. Damn! <laughs> it feels good to have a little more energy back in the market because for a while there, it was just like a slow yeah. bleed, right? Yeah, I was still like, buying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that people that were smart were just DCAing, like they were just buying in increments, you know, because nobody could really time the top or time the bottom unless you know you're you're Einstein, right? I mean, it's difficult to get it exactly right. Yeah. Um, so, what are you stacking right now? Like, what is what is your game plan? Um, for the I like I like the ultra rare comics. Like, I've made like a couple videos on my TikTok about that um, right. because I feel like. And I've said it before, I feel like when VV blows up, like when it actually gets to the masses and everyone knows this and, and like all these first appearances, the rare and exclusive rares are only exclusive to VV. Like you can't get them anywhere else. Like you can't go to Palm and go get them. You can't go to OpenSea to go get them. Um, so I've just been stacking those. Like I have, I have a, have a, I have a lot of those um Sick. and then one of my one of my stacks that i've been uh stacking i'll i mean i was gonna make a video about it but it's cool i'll just go ahead and yes uh, go ahead and throw it out here <laughs> um what i've been uh a collectible i've been stacking is uh the queen from uh from snow white 
And the reason why is because she's the first Disney villain. Ah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just a little quirk that I have that I was like, hey, you know, when like all these Disney villains, like they may not look the best, but the the character itself sparked the villains for the rest of the like Disney franchise, like the first in the first movie. The first Man, animated that's, movie. that's like really smart. Like that's super unique because when you look at that, like historically and the significance that on blockchain and data, like if somebody says in 50 years from now, oh, what was the first Disney villain that was like released on the blockchain? Like that's mm -hmm. the one, right? So that's a, um, that's super cool. Like I haven't really heard that many people talk about that. And I totally agree with you with the URs. Mm -hmm. I just don't think we ever saw the volume for the URs mm -hmm. to really take off. But when you think about it from like, a, from a logical perspective, like, you know, AF15 SR 10K, and then mm -hmm. the UR only 250 editions more and it's like a K. Yeah. Right? But it's like yeah. it's still, I mean, it's it's very significant. And like you said, on top of that, it's like an exclusive cover. So yeah, it is. pretty sick. And then also another reason why I did it is because and a lot of people are gonna follow suit, which I'm seeing because the URs are getting really scarce on the market. Like mm -hmm. there's some that are like 10, 9, 13, 14, but at the time, I wanted to stack comics from watching, you know, comics and crypto, uh, uh, my collectibles, like all the, the big comic OGs in the real world and stuff like that. And I didn't have SR money. So they was like, hey, yeah, buddy's SR. So I was like, I'm SR broke. So I'm like, what the, <laughs> so what's the next thing to go to? The URs. So, right. so that's where I'm going. And the people who don't have the UR money are going to go to the rares and trickle, like trickle that line. Soon, like there's going to be the comics we have now they're going to be extinct pretty soon. And that's like scary to say, but they, they're not going to be on the market. Wow. It's such a good point you make, man. And the thing that people don't realize too, like these are the first time that these comics have been revealed. So even if Marvel has another relationship with another NFT company in the future, like they're never going to have the same weight as these first ones. Like it's almost going to be like a facsimile as you yeah. see in the physical world, right? So, mm -hmm. and like the other part of that is there's, it's not like they can add additions if the only thing we can do from here on out is burn them which yeah. is the likely thing that's going to happen so you're holding yeah. on to a grail with the potential to be burned mm -hmm. um you know so it's amazing to me how much of the faith has been lost because of like the external circumstances and you know the economic markets at, at whole but like mm -hmm. the principles of what vv stands on are the same and if anything they've been even getting better with all these things that they're going to be rolling out like the mcp you know so yeah i don't know man i don't i don't know what people are doing i mean now now's the time to buy you know? yeah and then like when i when i was at when i was at new york comic-con this year and just being able to just talk to you know david and dan and reese and a lot of people in the community vp magic uh I met I met Foster there. I met Randy there. Wow. Um, I met Sanjay there. Like just talking to you know some of the was in the community and then the founders. Like it was just a no brainer. Like they're super passionate. Like like a lot of people say like if you have the opportunity to go to the event, it will change you. And ever since I went to the event, like I've brought hundreds of comics now. Like. Wow. <laughs> I had I probably had like I don't know like two hundred and fifty then that just like two X since then. I just been buying comics and buying wow. collectibles that I like and stuff like that and then I still have my VV logo, like I'm 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 just holding on to it. Good for you, man. That's what it's about right now. It's you know, like as soon as we're in this market now, everything's down, you know, it, like the, people have to think about what's the downside from here. Like if you sell it for 3K, let's say the VV logo, how much further down will it get, right? Maybe it goes down to 2K yeah. max, right? Mm -hmm. But if you hold on to it, the upside is like, you know, nobody knows. Like it could be yeah. 5K or it could be 50K. So I feel mm -hmm. like that's the interesting part to me is that, you know, people almost like want to sell at a loss after buying for a high when I'm like, man, yeah. like the last thing you want to do right now, in my opinion, at least is sell, but mm -hmm. you know, crazy. yeah. Like, I mean, they, they like a lot of stuff can't really go lower. Like if you start seeing uncommon and rare FA Spidey for like $50 and $20, 
I'm buying them up. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's what exactly right. Same here. Like my I've got targets for like the lowest mm-hmm. things could drop, or else I'm t- and people forget, like, you know, one whale like Dr. Profit or you oh, know yeah. Silicon or Sleep In or any of these guys, they can go and like kill a floor for like 30 NFTs, no problem, right? Yeah. So I agree with you. I think there's, you know, like things can only get so low. Like people are waiting for partners to drop to 2K. I think that's, you know, it's possible. It but I mean, possible. I just don't see, like I, uh, there'd be too many buyers, I think at that point. Like I would buy, mm-hmm. you know, Todd at 500, I would be buying. Um, you know, I'm just trying to think of like, even bro, you know, another one that's really going on the radar right now is the Dragon Girl, the UR Dragon Girl and the Gold Dragon Girl. Um, yeah. What do you yeah, think of those? A while ago. Like, I really do like, like the art. Mm-hmm. Oh, another thing that I've been uh that I've been I've been buying, well not really buying, but still kind of keeping my eye on is the art. Because watching like the VV verse video and just yeah. seeing like about decoration and things like that, like there's a lot of art on there that I've been doing some research on on the artists and it's like, yeah, this is this person's first NFT. Like Allison Bamcat. I mean, like that's not her first NFT because she's been doing stuff on different platforms, like I think Foundation or something like that on Ethereum. But as far as her 3D work, Allison Bamcat is on there. I mm-hmm. actually got my, my, uh, my, uh, I'm going blank on the name right now. Let me, let me look at my phone real quick. Man, and how did you do on the um, Journey into Mystery 83 drop? Did you get, did you grab anything there? So that one, yeah, I, I wound up landing and then um, I'm, I'm stacking it when I can because mm-hmm. I kind of I kind of missed the boat on stacking AI15 because it just ran. It was they 200, ran. it was 300, and then it went yeah. to 400. So I think that journey into mystery is 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 pretty much a sleeper right now. I'm waiting to get an ultra rare, but it's still out of my range right now. Yeah, I think the the thing that people forget with Journey into Mystery is that it's such a limited drop compared to a lot of these yeah. other Grail drops. Like, I mean, we look at Fantastic Four number one. We look at MC1, we look at AF15, or um, Amazing Spider-Man number one. Like, all of them had 60,000 editions. Now, it's like Grails with 10,000 editions. Man, so yeah. my number one Grail comic all time, I keep saying this, mm. is Hulk number one. If uh, that thing comes out, bro, and it will, <laughs> I'm I'm just going to be stacking the shit out of it. Like, And it's interesting because I have such... A, a love for that comic and it's just because mm-hmm. of the actual cover of the comic like i just think it's so unique the fact that like the hulk was gray and everything and, yeah. and the, the blue background that i would actually just stack the comments like i don't even know mm-hmm. if i'd want the secret rare like i would just want a shitload of the comments is that the one where it has like bruce banner like smaller on the cover and then like the hulk is like bigger in the background exactly exactly okay yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they actually dropped that for the disney 100 I've been actually buying those in like the physical world. So they did like the Disney versions of those. Like they did Hulk one, they did Shoot. Avengers eight, they did uh, Fantastic Four number one. So yeah, like I've been I've been buying those too <laughs> in the real world. Good for you, bro. So uh, me, hmm? on TikTok, right? Yeah. Who's the most popular for VV? Is it you? Are you one of the guys? I mean. I would say like I am, but before, like when I started getting on TikTok, um, I would say two people that were leading the way that I seen was Eva from Everversity and Jamie, Jumpstart Jamie. Oh, okay. Like, they, they were putting out content. Well, I mean, they, they're still putting out content, but right. like Janie lead, is, is leading the space in like the Web3 fashion kind of, kind of realm. She still does VV here and there. Like she did, uh, I think the last couple VV videos that she did was when she was at New York Comic Con. Hmm. But um, at Viversity, you know, she was doing like the course, but well, she's still doing it. She had the whole like course out, how to like flip from, you know, nothing all the way up to like, you know, thousands of dollars and things like that. So um, yeah, those were the two that were like leading the way to me. And then I was like, yeah, I got to like find the, my little niche to kind of get in here and, and, you know, do that. But I mean, yeah, I just been just posting every day and we're trying to post every day, um, sometimes like three times a day and wow. just, just grinding it out, man. <laughs> yeah, that's insane, man. Like the dedication. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm lazy sometimes. I love doing this, but it's <laughs> yeah. like a mindset for me because I have to like really be able to like ask the right questions and like, you know, the fact that you're putting out that much content, 
but you know the other thing that i've seen too is like like other than you and a few obviously like a lot of the the main youtubers and stuff a lot of people what they do is they go way too hard too quick Mm -hmm. and then they spiral Mm -hmm. out and they like how many youtubers have we lost during this bear market right Mm-hmm. And I'm like, man, like, so I think that's why I always give myself like tiny little breaks or like a few weeks every now and then. Like I just took a few, mm-hmm. a few weeks before another interview and I'm like, I feel like refreshed, yeah. you know, I think it's just important. Yeah, what, like, yeah. 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 One of the, like, like I said it to someone else before, but one of the, the, the people that I miss from, uh, from doing videos, I don't know if you know them, the, the VV vision guys, they got the, the, the two guys I was in college. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember Dude, that. Like their videos were just so like, engaging like their their charisma back and forth and things like that like 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 they were the uh like the younger version of like bb bros right and i remember they yeah. always like jumped over the bed or something right is yeah. that right? Like, <laughs> yeah, like jump over the bed when he started like it's funny how people yeah. like superstar money does the punches yeah that's hilarious yeah. man yeah, they were funny but yeah like with with me like what 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 kind of keeps like my content going is um just doing more stuff that incorporates like me within the nft space so basically like like incorporating like my journey of, along with telling news and you know on um, unboxing videos and things like that so i always have something to kind of put out whether it's a story post or whether it's uh, an unboxing video or whether it's something dealing with like news like how wire happened right so it's always something for me to like put out and then I'm 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 literally always in the space. Like I'm always on Twitter. I'm always, uh, I'm I'm heavy in the Cardano NFT community. So I'm just always around. And I still work a full time job. <laughs> Bro, yeah, <laughs> and, exactly. And I have a three year old daughter. <laughs> so, oh, congrats, um, man! Yeah, yeah thanks, like you man. said, it's a juggling act, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's wow. Nice. wow. And what would you say, like? you're seeing from your audience on TikTok? Is it generally like younger people? Like I'm presuming younger, I mean, not to be stereotypical, but I'm assuming younger men that are like interested in this. Or are you seeing like actually like some older people? I guess you wouldn't even know, but do you have like analytics on TikTok? Like on YouTube, you could see your age range and stuff. Is that how? Yeah, I, I do know. have analytics. And surprisingly, it's people with, with I would assume like within my, my age bracket, like I'm, I just turned 31 on January 9th. We're the same um, age, brother. Ah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, um, I, from posting just literally crypto stuff, like that's what pops up my feed. And that's the people that actually like respond to my things. And a lot of, a lot of the VV community from, from Twitter's on there. Um, like they may not have like full pages to it. Like they post a lot of things, mm. but, um, but some of the VV community follows me on there. A lot of you know crypto people, some some people within the Cardano and um, I'm an NFT community, some people who have just physical comics. Um, so yeah, it's like a mix of both. So it's like a physical collecting and then like digital collecting and then crypto news and some other like stuff that I that I follow like will pop up on there. But it seems like a mix of like the content that I'm putting out in a way. I think that's how TikTok works. Like right. at first, I didn't really I didn't really understand how TikTok worked. I went to TikTok because YouTube just wasn't working. It, it literally wasn't working. Out. I was like, man, YouTube. Blah, blah, blah. So I was like, all right, cool. Let me try TikTok. And my like, like my day job is full video production. Like that's what I do. Like wow. shoot videos for like, for like commercial products. Um, I sit there and edit all day. But I didn't have the time to bust out my camera rigs and like set up and shoot videos. So I was like, I need to use my phone. So I was like, let me just figure out like just how to get good with my phone and just put out raw content and started getting creative with it. Started figuring out little apps on my phone and stuff like that. And that's just that's just kind of how it happened. Wow, that's so sick, man. Yeah, I could tell that you're like a video editor just by all the angles that you have and everything. I was like, oh, like <laughs> you know, so that makes that makes way more sense now, man. And um, you know, one question I like to ask everybody is, you know, what would Superman number one legendary be if it was on VV right now? What do you think? Man, um, are we still talking the same mints, 4,000? Yeah, yeah. And we're talking just, I think, 150, right? 150 editions for the legendary. Um, I would, minimum, I would say 100K, minimum. Like Like in the market that we're in now, I would say 100K. 
Wow. Like just for the legendary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, well SR in our terms, but but the legend, yeah. yeah. I would say like minimum 100k. It, like it, like it would be where Donnie is at. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there'd be so few, right? People would probably mm -hmm. just like. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, the only thing I could say is like AF15 SR has 250 editions, and it's only I think 10 right now. But I'm mm -hmm. like, you know, I think like in a bull for sure over 100k. Like I think whoever landed a legendary and raised, waits for the right time to sell it. I 100% yeah. agree with you that it's like a $100,000 item, you know? It's mm. crazy to think that, you know, this is the thing that people forget about NFTs is that you could literally just show up to a drop and have the opportunity to win something like that, you know? Yeah. Like, um, I was on, I got in on the uh, Robin drop on DC. The, yeah, me I, too. Oh, nice. But, but I didn't get it though. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So I got one, but I um. got the... I, I forget what the equivalent is of the UR. It, what is it called? Like an Epic. Yeah, Epic, yeah. Which I thought was at least going to be landing me $400. It turned out it was 100 bucks. Mm -hmm. I was like, ah. <laughs> <But still. laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just wound up buying buying a common. I think I think I brought mine for like $39. So I think it I think it's still in that same range right now. Nice. Um that that that's a comic that um that I'm going to be stacking. I'm giving, I'm giving away all my gems, but I already made a video about it. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm gonna be stacking. That Sick. that and the Harley Quinn, the first appearance of Harley Quinn. Yeah, that came out recently. Was that today or is that like a few weeks ago? Right? No, that was or today, no. Yeah. That, yeah, today. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there was another Harley Quinn comic that came out. I think it was like this, the one right after Superman or before, right? What was that? Yeah, one? that that is pretty much. Uh, if, if I remember from my collectibles video, um, I think that that's her like origin. So it's like the like her first run so it's kind of like so af 15 is like the first appearance of spider-man mm -hmm. and then asm1 is like that first story run so i, I think you. that i think that that comic is is that and that and that comic is sitting is sitting pretty pretty low right now too wow so what's the harley quinn legendary of today what's that worth right now because i i'll be honest i forgot um, about that drop usually I'm, real quick i'm bro there's so many drops i just forget sometimes you know yeah. and, I'm like, oh, that's what you do. and the thing that i don't like about dc is like if it's not going to make me at least 150 bucks or more uh -huh. i'm like i don't have time to sit in a queue for an hour or whatever and get mm -hmm. all my like five six screens ready i'm like you know? <laughs> dude yeah but the good thing about dc nft is that they only drop on like one day so we don't have to deal with like you know how it is where it's like you know we have tuesday we have thursday we have friday True. things like that so um yeah, it's true. Yeah. If you set some time aside, it's not a big deal. Yeah, but um, I think the because I, I think, think it was the... like a hundred and some dollars. That makes sense. Because I think the comic, the nine point eight in real life, is like one point three k or something like that. Mm -hmm. So that would that would make a lot of sense. And is it? Um, yeah, I was no, just gonna ask, ask. Is it? Uh, like are the comics similar to like superman number one where it's like the legendary epic or is it just different variants well that's the thing yeah so with this drop they did it totally different they kind of took the re the the vv route where they changed up all the covers like all the covers are not the same and then they did a they didn't put the 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 rarity on it so it just says common uncommon rare epic and then legendary Weird. so i thought that was yeah so like like every drop, like they're experimenting with like something different, which is you know you know pretty pretty new as far as like they're trying to see like what what works and what sticks. Yeah, and they're not gonna drop drop all of their grails like right after like right after each other and like kind of have like hiccups and things like that. So man, but I do it, commend them for like trying to listen to the community and try to you know try things out. Yeah, that's smart. The thing that makes it like a crazy for me is like when I look at all the, so it seems as though this is the trend I'm noticing on their cheaper comics through DC, they mm -hmm. tend to like put out all these different variants. And then on like the grails, they make them different like grades. So yeah. like, I mean, if, cause if I start thinking about it, man, like Superman number one, only 150 at the pristine, like, cause if you think about like AF 15 SR or AF 15 in general on VV 10,000, but all are pristine, they all have different variant covers, but they're pristine. Yeah. On freaking DC, the only time Superman number one in pristine condition will ever be shown or used is is literally 150 editions of it. You yeah. know what I'm trying to say? Like it's yeah. already a grail, and then you only yeah. have 150 that are perfect. And the mm -hmm. whole reason I'm buying a fucking NFT to begin with is because I want something perfect. In my yeah. opinion, I don't mm -hmm. want 
something that's already digitally degraded that to me <laughs> defeats the purpose of what an nft stands for that's the whole reason i'm interested in it so the fact yeah. that they've done that is crazy like that could be a huge game changer in the future i don't know yeah yeah i made a video about about their uh like their their grading and how like they kind of implemented like the cgc like within their like nft drops which i thought was pretty cool at the moment um like like everyone's on the fence about it it's either like they like it or they don't like it but then i think another reason why they did that is because in the real world like if you try to find like a real superman number one at like an 8.5 hmm. it'll 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 look like an 8.5 but it'll still have you know dings here and there like the comic came out in 1939 so it's like <laughs> <laughs> yeah i got you it kind of also would take away potentially as well from the the how legendary it is if you just go here's ten thousand freshmen for you. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I got you. And maybe and maybe that's part of it, right? Maybe they were saying like we want to ensure that legacy prevails, where this is still going to be super scarce and important in the future. So, but but what's interesting to me is like let's just say hypothetically DC goes okay, you know what? We're actually going to move forward with just all of these comics not being graded for future grail drops let's just say like you know action comics number one comes out and like you know batman or detective comics number 27 batman and superman comes out and they're all variant yeah. editions like bv that would put mm -hmm. so much more weight on the importance of that legendary of like superman yeah, number one mm -hmm. right? but really really all the legendaries across the board because i think True. they did it with super they, they did it with superman one they did it with robin's first appearance Mm. I think I think they did it with the Brave and the Bold, and they did it with the Black Adam comic. Not Black Adam's first appearance, but they did it with Black Adam too, I believe. Okay, I'm not too sure. Don't quote me on that, people. But I think yeah. that might be. <laughs> I, I think Black Adam might might have the grades as well. Crazy man, it's really fascinating right now to see all the all of us trying to speculate on like what this means do you know what i mean yeah. they're the first licensed nfts in the world are the biggest baddest most important physical stuff that we've ever mm -hmm. seen collectibles comics etc and it's like are it you know in every like principle of collecting the first of something is always significant always is a lot of money and now they're all here and people don't give a fuck and i'm yeah. like I'm like, this is a good thing, but like, I'm just thinking like, man, imagine like, I know this is super, super fanatical, but like if somebody like Apple or Meta buys VV, let's just say, and wants to integrate that into like their metaverse or something like that, mm -hmm. like the fact, like those, those comics, those collectibles would skyrocket to places that are like unimaginable. Right. And I know mm -hmm. that's obviously, you know, maybe less than 0.01% chance of happening, but it's, it's the world we live in. Anything's possible. Yeah. Um, but what are your thoughts on that? Like, do you think this is always going to stay like a niche project or well, what? I honestly don't think so because um, there was a Twitter space held uh, sometime last year. I did a video on it as well. Uh, Randy act, asked a question to David Yu, um, were, there, were there ETFs and bigger, you know, hedge funds kind of interested in VV? Um, David, you couldn't, you know, come right out at the time and say, you know, yes, this, that, and the other, but he did kind of hint at that, you know, there's, there's places and people in higher up places that are interested in, you know, VV collectibles, first appearances and things of that nature. And he was also saying that there are some physical comic book stores that have been hitting him up, trying to buy <laughs> comics that haven't been sold out yet. <laughs> wow just to like i don't know if they just want to hoard them or they just want them because they are you know the first digital comic of whatever comics that they're hitting them up about but there there are people like outside of our bb community that we have that we think is small but there's people in higher places that you know are are seeing what's going on like david and dan like they they know people mm. I love that point, bro. And and it doesn't take much, right? Like, again, because of these edition sizes, it doesn't take much on the significant stuff. Like, I went into a comic book shop. It's in Mississauga. I think it was called, like, Gotham City. Some people might know it. But the guy that was there, the owner, was into Vivi. And I talked to him a bit about it. And he recognized me. And he's like, dude, that's crazy. Like, And I was like, 
so cool that you're into this shit. And yeah. he was buying Miles Morales comics, like the FA of Miles Morales. And uh, he bought like 150 and he said he just used wow. his business, a business fund, but he just only bought the comments. He said like to oh, him man. that made the most sense. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were just chatting and I'm like, man, like if you think about it, it only takes another like 30, 40 shops like him to a few institutions and then a few whales and some people like us that go in and that's it. Like you can't yeah. get those. So, yeah. you know, the mass adoption thing, it is the golden goose, but I don't think it's going to take as much as people think, especially mm -hmm. as we get into augmented reality, virtual technology, metaverses, all that shit. You yeah. Know? And then like the the digital frames as well, like those were previewed at 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 DesignCon as well. So um, you know, having Netflix, having like Todd one, two, three in a, inside a digital frame and it's sitting in your room and like or at work and you show it to somebody, like, hey, what's that? Oh, I got this on Vivi. Oh, what's Vivi? And you want to just talking to people and right. like sometimes the the mass adoption might just be like just a trinkle effect of like person to person to person and not maybe just a whole bunch of people all in at one time it'll be in like in waves like when certain things happen it'll just be in waves and waves like i've been telling my family about vivi for like months i don't know if they've been buying but i've been telling them <laughs> yeah <laughs> yo i like that yeah because that's it, man. Out of all these other cryptocurrency projects and like NFT projects, VV to me is the most accessible. It's mm -hmm. easy for anybody. It's easy to purchase. And then it's most familiar. Like, you know, yeah. these who these people are, you know, these characters, you know, these comic books. So like, if you want to talk about like mass surgeons, it's not going to be some niche open sea project that is appealing to a very small certain type of demographic it's going to be something that can cater to the masses and vv is the only project in my opinion so far that can do something like that so yeah. it's a good point dude and bro what did you think of the um the game of thrones or not the game of thrones uh was it game of thrones the uh drop on nifty and like the one character had like massive hands <laughs> you see that yeah yeah i don't know a lot about it because I, I haven't been following that like yeah. the whole lord of the rings thing um but i've seen like 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 clips of like photos on like twitter and like i've seen it it was like oh, that's not really premium like they were, I, I think that they were uh like classifying it as as being premium or something like that and people were like no this is not premium because it looks like this it looks like that but i mean that that shows you right there that other companies are trying to use well, not use but because it's not like vivi doesn't own the term premium digital collectibles but they're trying to follow suit because they're seeing that it's working. Right. So companies are like, hey, let's use these words. Like a lot of a lot of companies were using NFT for the longest. And VV was like, this is a collectibles. And then like people started using the term this is a collectibles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny now that that's so prevalent when before there was so much criticism of the word digital collectible. They're like, you know, mm -hmm. people are like, oh, what is that? And now it's like, if you say NFT, people are like, ew. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's crazy that shift, right? And right yeah. now, man, it's like a mint hunter's paradise on VV, man. Like so many, I saw a tweet today here. Like, I think I might have retweeted it. If I can, I'm just going to shout the guy out because I, I feel like that'd be actually like respectful. Oh, I got a special man too. I got to share with you. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I did. I didn't shut him out, but his name is VV Believer Eric. Mm -hmm. But he bought like the number eighty three Obi Wan for two hundred gems. What? And, yeah, and eighty three nineteen eighty three is like when I believe the third um, movie came out, right? For Star Wars. So yeah. it's like. You know, it's just crazy, right? Like, so, I mean, somebody's mm -hmm. going to love that for more than 200 gems in a bull market. You know what I mean? And Obi-Wan, yeah, yeah. fifth most popular character in Star Wars or top five, and it's going mm -hmm. for whatever it is, 70 gems. So, yeah. so yeah, let me hear about your mint, bro. Um. So, yeah, it was, I was, I was about to, like, go to sleep, and then I was like, let me just search the VV market. Then I wound up uh, finding this documentary uh, by, Chris, by Chris Claremont on Amazon Prime Video. And you know, he's talking about X-Men, the start of X-Men, things like that. So I'm like, all right, let me go to, you know, see what X-Men NFTs are on the market from comics to back to uh, collectibles. Um, and then I wound up searching the UR Storm. So lo and behold, like right near the floor, I find mint 1992 for Ultra Red Storm 
for seventy nine dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! I refreshed the screen like a retard because, <laughs> because I couldn't believe it was there, and then it was still there. So I, I, I like, I clicked by and brought it. And for those who don't know, that's the first year and first episode that X Men animated series came out. It was from 1992 to about to I believe 1995 or 1997, wow. one of the two. Um, and and it's all and, and it's the ultra rare, so it's so she's not the static version; she's you know the animated version. So that's sweet, man. Yeah, see, it's like thing, it's like moves like that that when it doesn't matter to anybody now, because like mm-hmm. it's gonna matter to people in the future. And like the thing that yeah. people don't understand, and this is what I've been trying to explain, is like similar to what you just did there. Like when there's a high volume of people interested into like one thing, like if we have like let's just say hypothetically thousands of X-Men fans, like they're all going to be fighting over your mint. But right now we might only have like four or five serious diehard X-Men fans that are in here that yeah. like just weren't on the UR storm at the time that you are, you know, but it's like, mm-hmm. that's what I'm trying to say is like, even, um, I forget his name now, but I reached out to him recently. He's got the matching 1977 star Wars first appearance NFTs, C3PO and R2D2 from the Disney golden moments. Oh man. And I'm like, it's crazy, right? And I mean, to me, that set, I mean, I know there's, you know, 12,333 editions of C3. And Mm -hmm. I think it's like 8,000 something of R2. But I'm like, man, that to me is still worth, I don't know, at least 100K for the set now. And I would say like in a a bull market, I don't even know what that would be worth. But like for the right guy, you get the right guy, bro. Like for sure, (laughs) you know? And then uh, another special man I have is I have, um snow white the actual like like paper art card yeah i have mint i believe it's 19 1944 i think it's 1944 wow and that's the year that snow white was like re-released like so it was like the first year in 1937 and then the first re-release was in 1944 damn i believe I believe that's the mint, but I want to make sure it's right because I don't want any Disney people to be on my heads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so crazy. it was 1944. And then I also have 19, mint 1903. Damn. Which is the birth year of Hamilton Lusk. And Hamilton Lusk, I'm, I may be butchering his last name, but he was appointed by walt disney himself to be like on the animating team like he was the first animator that he hit up to like design snow white and stuff like that wow and then he ended up being the the overall like 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 overseer like the supervising animator for the rest of the team for like the rest of the movie damn look at you go man you're doing your research (laughs) yeah like because like i because people wasn't like like they wasn't really like looking at those as being like kind of cool in a way like i guess like snow white would be i guess they want more of a version like how elsa is or something like that like more of a yeah. TV version but i'm like hey these are the first time that we're seeing like snow white and all the disney villains like on the blockchain like in these different types of formats and people are scooping up these mints like i tried to find certain mints for the rest of the series as far as like the disney villains like animators and things like that and I can't find them. They're just gone. People are smart, right? Yeah, they're just they're locking gone. that shit up, man. Like, yeah, hundred. Baby Viru probably has all of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know who another mint hunter is? He might be the best on the app, and I know he likes his privacy. But I will mention his uh, VV name because he posts on there. Mm-hmm. Is a uh, clever jerk. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's incognito, man. But he's got yeah. some crazy mints. I'm talking yeah. like the craziest mints I've ever seen. Like he's got. The 2099, um, 2099 Spider Man, mm-hmm. like he actually has the reflective mint. Like he's got like all the one two threes, eight eight eights. Like I don't want to give it away because he's probably gonna be like, Chad, you screwed up my <laughs> my hunting strategy. But like, man, yeah. this guy posts some crazy stuff on on uh, like the VV feed. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it's cool. Like, and in in the bull, man, that's how I made money. It was because mm-hmm. I was buying those special mints. Like every time I bought something like a special mint or mm-hmm. a low mint, bro, like usually at least three to four times the floor. Easy. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's how it was back then. That's how it was. And it's just because we had a lot of people concentrated on not that many NFTs. And then now the difference is we have very few people concentrated on a lot of NFTs. 
And yeah. that's where we're not seeing why those low mints and these different special mints are selling for the same price. I, in my opinion, mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest reason, but don't be wrong. I want, if we ever get a mass resurgence, like the same yeah. thing should prevail. And that's mm -hmm. what I find so interesting, bro, is we literally had a te telltale sign of like what happens in a bull market. And now mm -hmm. here we are in a bear and people are still not understanding like, like, <laughs> you know, Boba Fett, like Obi-Wan, like, like mm. lightsabers, et cetera. Like, I mean, that's just star Wars. And then we got like Mickey's and all this stuff like FAs and, you know, pretty decent addition sizes should go parabolic. If we do see again, a huge surge, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like one, one, one Disney item or, or, or a couple of Disney items that are going to do really good. Like once we hit like, an actual bull run in crypto and a bull run like a like a more of a bull run inside vv is those animated mickeys because mm -hmm. like people like like really hardcore like disney fans and not even just disney fans because i'm not a hardcore disney fan but i do appreciate you know the movies that they put out and things of that nature and to like the animated mickeys like the the, the hitching a ride one and like the band leader one like those are cool like to yeah. me those are cool so i don't know yeah and it's mickey mouse i mean it's uh, yeah. you know we got steamboat that kicks it off and then there's mm -hmm. only those other three sets in the entire collection right like if i'm not wrong they, they it's pretty much they closed it right on the fourth yeah. one mm -hmm. so forever that's going to be the first mickey series for you know however you want to like call it yeah. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty massive, you know? So, mm -hmm. and I mean, you only have to go to one Disney world or Disneyland to, to get a scale of the amount of fans, you know? So mm -hmm. I totally agree, man. I think, I think it's just interesting. Like, I think right now is, you know, it's an important moment. Like, I don't think there's a rush, but I think like anybody that's smart, that still believes in the project, you know, mm -hmm. is, is going to start looking around and starting to, to pile their stacks. Yeah. Cause even, even this, this project, like, like not to jump tangents, but this one project uh, called Makasi Planet that I talk a lot about and that I'm like, I'm, and that I'm really like, like involved in. I minted them last year for I believe like thirty eight, like a piece. I, wow. I brought three of them. Uh, I wound up selling one early, but I sold it for profit. And it's one of like the first uh, play to earn games on Cardano, and the team's like really solid. They've been building, uh, putting out beta versions of the game. The actual game drops, I believe, the end of this month. And they drop land and everything like that, uh, breeding, a whole bunch of this different stuff. And those NFTs are worth a, not not a, a substantial amount of ADA, but it's been just trajectory going up ever since, like, like the year before last. Because they meant in 2021, so it's like two years old now. Wow. But, I've been on that. <laughs> so that's one of like my other projects, like outside of VV that I just stack. I have a lot of. That's sweet, man. Good for you, bro. Yeah. And that's important too, right? It's like, you know, you want to play, you know, you want to play all cards here. You don't want to just be mm -hmm. holding the same, you know, yeah. ace and jack suit. Like you want to be like thinking about all the different mm -hmm. options. So, yeah. I mean, that's cool. And I mean, Cardano, as we know, is going to be another massive network right i mean i know like eth is the biggest right now but i mean that's 100 percent in there i mean mm -hmm. i know we've got mcfarland digital we've got recur you know we've got the dc nfts we've got nifty we've got wax i mean there's yeah. so many freaking platforms that's just licensed then you got mm -hmm. broadside i mean i was big into broadside i don't know if you got in on that project but like oh uh, yeah like it was when it like i had the money to mint it but I think I wanna buy something on Cardano or buying something inside of VV. And then I seen the price run. I was like, damn. I haven't checked in a while, but yeah. uh like I don't know what the prices are in are in ETH right now. And then ETH is went up right now, so it's like I might as well just I don't know, wait a little bit. But I did want to get one because I did like the whole the whole story thing and like the physical book thing. Like yeah. ever since DV I've been kinda like linked to getting uh matching physicals with digital so it's like so this one this one right here so reva like i have a physical reva <laughs> that's cool so that's sick. Like, yeah <laughs> yeah reva and reva is cheap too right now right i think she's like yeah. 48 bucks or something i think her retail is 60 so yeah yeah i want to get her on drop so mine is mine is in in deficit right now <laughs> but yeah yeah <laughs> 
12 bucks who cares right yeah yeah that's crazy man yeah there, i mean there's a lot of there's a, r- a lot of really cool projects i mean i did a few reviews on different ones as well like i even did like this project called wizardia which was like a play to earn game as well and it was like about like mm-hmm. having these different like arenas that these wizards would play in and then if you bought like an arena it'd be like similar to buying a house every time oh, people man. played in your arena you'd get like passive income generated so you get like a portion of whatever that you know that happened so you're like you know doing nothing and making money and i think that's you know nfts are far from dead it's just which mm-hmm. nft projects are going to be prevail and are going to be sustainable yeah. and which ones are going to have utility so i feel like you know there's a lot of picking and choosing but man like even like you know rftk clones board apes you mm-hmm. know mutant apes like man so many of those just went to heights that are crazy and like 50 eth is now like the all-time low <laughs> <laughs> Right, I mean, it's like people yeah. are like, "Oh shit, I I had to sell my board eight for fifty ETH." But like, okay, <laughs> no problem, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It, was, it was crazy. Like, yeah. during 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 that time, it was. Crazy. So, what are your thoughts about like all these different metaverses, right? Because we're gonna have Vverse, mm-hmm. and then we're gonna have you know like various metaverses, and 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 my thing is is like. You know, like, is this all bullshit? A lot of these other metaverses that these crypto projects are pulling together, or or do you actually foresee some really thoughtful, sophisticated metaverses coming out in these different crypto projects? So I would, I would say I really been seeing like some sophisticated things, like besides the VV verse. Um, one of them, you know, like how I just spoke about, like Macaulay Planet. It's it's not really a metaverse, but yeah, they're doing things with inside of it that are bring people in um another project is called future fest io which is on on cardano as well and they mainly specialize in pretty much having like a get together like a party Hmm. so you would like bring your nfts in there as far as we are um and they've bring they've brought some like top edm artists like to actually perform and things like that so their their first live event which was a like a year and a half ago or last year um was was cascade i don't know if 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 you heard of cascade or anything Mm -hmm. like that but it's pretty big in the edm space and that was their first like live event um so they're 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 doing pretty big things so i believe that to to succeed in the metaverse and and i could be wrong um is that the projects need to they they would need to pick a lane like Mm. vv is doing like vv is doing something to where they've already since the beginning have been talking about trying to appeal to a lot of people and things like that so of course like their vv verse would and you know bringing in builders like the vault builders and things like that um to be able to earn passive income from you know building and stuff in there so vv i I feel like it's going to be the all-encompassing like like metaverse but other projects i would feel like they would have to like make a lean as as far as like trying to compete in this space and not try to do anything to where they're trying to do too much. Mm. Like Future Fest is just doing, you know, parties. Like if you want to go party on Cardano, you hit a Future Fest, you set up parties and things like that. Um, so I feel like like it like it's gonna be niche down. Like it's not gonna be like how it was before where people just throwing out metaverse like metaverse this and metaverse that. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah that that's a really smart point because like you said if if everyone's just creating the same kind of metaverse everybody gets their land their houses etc and you can do everything i mean you know which one are you going to pick there's going to be thousands of different ones so like you said if you're picking a lane and you're the best in that lane you know that like the way that i am i'm envisioning it is like these massive companies like apple meta you go into there and then like that's the one that's like the biggest and the craziest and then there's all these portals to these different other metaverses like there's the vv verse there's this verse there's that verse and you get to go inside them and the interoperability component is i think going to be the toughest challenge is Mm -hmm. like there's only going to be partnerships within certain things like maybe apple will have its metaverse with its partnerships and you know microsoft will do the same with theirs Mm -hmm. you know but like you said there's still so much to unravel but i just find it funny when people are like oh yeah the metaverse i'm like what the (laughs) fuck do you mean the metaverse like this this is not a simple concept you know it looks more like a crappy video game right now it looks like a bad grand theft auto you know (laughs) yeah yeah like it's it's gonna take some time like like maybe i don't know Maybe 2026, we'll start seeing really, like really more fleshed out like 
quote unquote like metaverses yeah things like that um i don't know if you've seen like uh, uh apple's new like headset thing yeah but pe- people are complaining about it they're like uh it, it looks like too big and things like that so people are ha- half of the people are here and half of the people are there so right but but once everything hap- like switches over to that and you have to do that because you know there's just not enough jobs in the quote-unquote real world to survive and things like that it's it's just going to be like inevitable for you to like work in the metaverse and do things in the metaverse whether you're half and half like you do part-time you know regular day job within the quote-unquote real world and then you Mm. work a little bit in the metaverse so it's not going to be full-on metaverse like we're not just going to be in our houses the whole entire time like that's not going to happen but yeah um, yeah man it's funny that you say that you know like even like recently i was like calling celebrity cruises to to book a trip with my wife and i was like man this is taking me like 45 minutes i can't see why it's taking so long now mm-hmm. I, like i thought about that whole thing happening in a metaverse where mm-hmm. i can see like the travel agent or like the representative like at a desk and i'm like two yeah. people behind that do you know yeah. what i'm saying i'm like oh well this yeah. doesn't seem as bad because i kind of know my placement i know what's happening there's things to look at you know mm-hmm. what i'm trying to say like it's just like those are the things i'm like that's the future i see um for all this stuff you know but um but yeah bro listen man it's it's been it's been fun um obviously just really wanted to get to know you i wanted other people to kind of give a chance to see you know who you are like i said i've been following you for a long time we're both ogs Uh, and uh yeah i would love to get you back on with a few other guys too or a few other girls and um you know like look forward to doing this again man so uh any last words you want to share with uh with the community I would say not financial advice, but just stack what you love and collect what you love because these prices right now aren't going to last forever with, within any project that you're in. Cause the entire crypto market is like doing, has like a little pump from certain news and things like that, things shutting down, things opening up. Um, but like I would say, I would say just, just take advantage and uh, take a look at AI. That's that GPT. Yeah, please take a look at that. That shit's been saving my life, man. I've literally been yeah. using it for everything. Mm-hmm. Oh, quick, quick note. Randy did a video, and someone had asked it about VV, and it knows what VV is. Hey, that's a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good sign. AI is in our is on our way floor, guys. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Sounds good, bro. Well, thanks again for coming on. Uh, You're welcome, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, my pleasure, man. We'll do it again soon. Cool.